Welcome. I'm Brenda Mahoney, joined by State Auditor Suzanne Bump, Democrat up for re-election. Thank you for participating. I'll go over the format of today's interview. This will be a live-to-tape interview. That means no edits. And once we begin, um, there were also no pre-screening of questions prior to this. Answers are limited to two minutes each, and we will start with a one-minute opening statement from Ms. Bump, as well as a one-minute uh, closing statement. So, Ms. Bump, thank you for joining us. You have a one-minute opening statement. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you today and to speak to all of the citizens of the Commonwealth. Um, I have been honored to be your state auditor for the past three and a half years and look forward to continuing in this role. No one in state government, whether you are uh, relying in, on government services, whether you are a taxpayer, should be worried about whether their money is being well spent, whether there are protections against fraud, waste, and abuse, whether they are at the top of the priority chart when government agencies are determining what programs they're going to operate and how they're going to spend your money. It's the job of the state auditor to ensure that agencies stay true to the mission, that they deliver services as effectively and as efficiently as possible. We are independent and objective and work to the highest ethical standards and standards that are set for auditing by the uh, United States Comptroller's Office and the Government Accountability Office. I've been pleased to serve in this role. Thank you. And now we'll begin with the questions. Um, what are the biggest challenges facing the Auditor's Office at this point, and what priorities would you support to address them? Well, we have been in a state of evolution since the day I walked in the door. You'll recall that my predecessor had been there for 24 years. Uh, it really required us to do a great deal of revamping of the office. Uh, we have put an emphasis on professionalization, on training. There are now education standards. Uh, we had to undergo a peer review. Uh, as soon as I came in, I asked the State Auditors Association to conduct a peer review of the office. It should be done every three years. It hadn't been done for 16 years. And the office fail, failed that peer review in 2014. That meant extensive emphasis on overhaul of all of our processes and procedures and investment in technology and investment in training of the staff uh, and uh, just a new way of doing business in the auditor's office. Uh, we have been fortunate that the uh, legislature and the governor's administration have allowed us to make the, uh, the investments, particularly in information technology, so that we can do a much better job of combing through all of the spending and the record keeping that is kept by agencies in order to see where they are likely to go off track, um, whether they have adequate controls against waste, fraud, and abuse, and whether they're really acting as effectively and as efficiently as they should be on behalf of taxpayers and people who depend on their services. So we are constantly evolving to meet the challenges of a $36 billion budget and the hundreds of agencies that we have to audit on a regular basis. So that is the, that's a big emphasis. It's on professionalism, it's on delivering for the, for the taxpayers accountability and using audits to make government work better. Yes, what principles should drive state audits and how do you prioritize these principles in practice? Essentially, how do you choose who and what to audit? Well, our mandate in the, in the law uh, is that we audit agencies on a rotating basis uh, and that we do so ac according to government standards. Uh, now, as I indicated just a moment ago, we weren't auditing to government standards. Uh, oh, by the way, and when they came back, when the State Auditors Association came back and did a peer review earlier this year, we got the highest possible rating. We went from failing to getting the highest possible rating. Um, and so when we are looking, though, at what we're going to audit within an agency, what we are evolving is our risk-based analysis so that using all of our new IT capacity and the new training standards for, uh, for our staff, we're able to look much more deeply into the complexities of state government and, and analyze 
much more complex systems. So we already know when we are going to audit uh, a department. For instance, we audited the Department of Children and Families, and we started that audit before that, that terrible disappearance and death of that, of that child. We knew that there were problems in the foster care system. And we found, indeed, that social workers weren't being trained. They weren't being properly supervised. They didn't have the information technology necessary to do their jobs. And so we, we are bringing that kind of m more in-depth analysis of agency operations and how agencies are, are meeting the needs, in this case, of protecting children who are in situations of abuse or neglect. Can you give us examples of when the state auditor is independent of the administration in order to serve as the check and balance at, on behalf of Massachusetts residents? The auditor's office is uh, independent under the Constitution. Uh, we, Although I'm part of the executive branch, we get our independence from the fact that I'm elected official, not appointed by the governor. Uh, that allows me to uh, have uh, access to all of the information about government operations, but be independent from them. Uh, we have ethical standards uh, that, we, that we set, and we, uh, we don't consult with the agencies uh, necessarily to, before an audit to say, we're coming in, get ready, uh, <laughs> so that they could, they could um, hide things. We, we set our own priorities, completely set our own priorities, and work according to government standards, but we are responsive to the taxpayers. We are responsive to the uh, constituent groups. Uh, we now are posting every work piece of work that we do um, online so that the public has immediate access, not just to some of the audits as it used to be, but to every, every audit that we put out, every report that we put out, uh, every recommendation that we make that turns into a piece of law, and there have been many of those. Do you believe that the state auditor's office has been an aggressive watchdog on behalf of taxpayers? And if so, can you give me some examples to justify your answer? Well, I think that one of the ways that you can measure uh, how aggressive we've been is, that, is by looking at the numbers. It's an auditor's office, so let's look at the numbers. We have identified in the past three and a half years more than $400 million worth of accounting variances, misspending, uh, inefficiencies uh, and, and, and outright fraud. Uh, we have, in addition to, the, uh, to our audit unit, a Bureau of Special Investigations. We conduct the, uh, the investigations when a public assistant agency or when we ourselves think that someone might be guilty of fraud relative to our state Medicaid program, Mass Health, or, or the welfare program, or child care, any of these subsidized programs. Um, we investigate those. We have found because of the expertise that we're requiring, um, we have, are finding more and more fraud on our own in public assistance programs. Uh, every year, the number, uh, the number gets higher. So we are, we are working smart in the auditor's office and producing great results. Our recommendations have been turned into legislation in numerous areas in terms of, the, for instance, the welfare reform legislation that the, that the legislature just passed and has been signed into law. Special education collaboratives, our recommendations were turned into law to improve the governance of special ed programs. They're supposed to serve taxpayers and special needs students. We were finding that money was being spent on board of directors members and to improperly in inflate the pensions of some of the workers there. We've improved the anti-bullying program uh, for the uh, state schools by virtue of our recommendations. Housing authority reform legislation uh, also bears uh, the, the evidence of our work. Is there anything the state auditor's office could have done more or better in the last four years? Um, it would have been great if we could have made these improvements even faster, uh, but the reality is that we had to keep working on the uh, fulfilling our mission even as we were undergoing this tremendous change. We have used resources from the existing budget in order to create a training program for our auditors and to institute uh, merit 
uh, pay for performance in state government. There are a few agencies that, are, uh, that do that or are even frankly able to do that. But I insisted that auditors be, be uh, evaluated uh, in terms of whether they're meeting government standards in their, in their work, not just at the end of the year, you know, on an annual basis, the way most of us get our, our, uh, our, our performance reviewed by our, our employer, but at the end of every audit. And if an auditor has, has not done as good a job in an area as we think, then we send them off for specialized training. So all of that was going on even as we were finding $400 million worth of misspending, fraud, uh, inefficiencies and accounting variances. So I guess that the, uh, so I would have I would have liked for this to be uh, to go along faster. But I'm very proud of what we've accomplished. To go from failing a peer review to getting the highest possible review in three years, that was quite a feat. And along that same line, are, are there areas of improvement that you would pursue if reelected? We are actually becoming um, one of the most advanced states in the area of what's called data analytics. So that is this taking together of all of these different kinds of data about state government spending and about results of agency uh, performance. And we are, uh, through these investments in training for the staff, higher education standards, merit pay, and then the information technologies, we, we are increasingly developing a capacity that is literally light years ahead of what many of my colleagues across the country are doing. We, in fact, have presented to them on our data analytics capacity and how we are using that to go deeper into state government. We've also presented to federal agencies uh, our, our model. So I am I'm very excited about what that means for, our, uh, for the future of the office. You touched a little bit on your, your auditors. What systems do you have in place that make sure um, state auditors are impartial um, watchdogs for the taxpayer, meaning you know they don't pursue audits based on political agenda and don't right. rubber stamp audits right. based on political gain? We have procedures that we follow that are part of the government auditing standards that are set by the comptroller um, and overseen by the government accountability office. Uh, they require us before on an annual basis, all of us who are involved in an audit um, have to disclose any p familiarity that we may have with an agency, any individuals within that, uh, within that agency uh, and the like. And so if we list an agency where we do, um, might have a familiarity threat or an independence threat, then first of all, you can't work on that audit. And so in fact, when there was an audit of an agency that I used to oversee when I was Secretary of Labor, I had to stay away from that audit and my, my deputy for auditing made all of the decision making around that. I made no decision making. And then at the start of an audit, you also check to make sure that everybody on the audit team has, uh, has again, independence. Uh, and there is regular supervision through the course of the audit, uh, and we have also created a quality assurance unit within the office that checks um, for audit quality, including independence, before it goes out. So we adhere very closely to the standards that are set by the government uh, uh, agencies, the federal government agencies that's, that set our standards. What makes you the best candidate for this job? What makes you want to continue this role of state auditor? I believe strongly that government has not just a, uh, an ability but a responsibility to uh, advance individual, societal, and economic opportunity. I guess that's what makes me a Democrat. And I want people to believe in their government. I know that if they don't, then we're not going to see the kind of progress that I think our state government is capable of. And so in order to have the rest of the, the public feel as good about their government as I do, then we have to be agents of accountability for the citizens of the Commonwealth. We have to be catalysts for reform in state government. And I've shown 
my ability to do that and to be a good steward of government resources. And I think it's, it comes from my philosophy of government. You have to build confidence in, the, in government. I know that there are some folks who think that, uh, that, that Democrats don't care um, about, about this role in government, but I believe deeply in the responsibility of everyone in government to be uh, engaged in self-examination of government activities and then self-correction to improve the, oper the spending of our money, the operation of government services. So I don't regard the work that we do as partisan at all, but it is motivated on my part by a very deep commitment to the values of a government that wants to deliver uh, progress to the citizens of the Commonwealth. So can you give me an example of where, an issue of where you and your opponent actually agree, uh, and two examples of issues where you do not agree and why your position is the best for Massachusetts? Well, I frankly haven't seen <laughs> much or, or heard much about my opponent. Um, frankly, I, I, do, I do know that she uh, has been critical of the fact that we are doing fewer audits. And she's right. We are doing fewer audits in the auditor's office. Um, I decided that we should uh, focus on quality um, and value to the taxpayers. So instead of doing superficial audits of of the adequacy of a computer backup system, for instance, at the Department of Transitional Assistance. When we went and did our audit of the Department of Transitional Assistance, we said, so what are you doing to fight fraud? Are you checking everybody's eligibility? We found they weren't. There were people who were uh, using the social security numbers of deceased persons in order to get benefits. Are you using, we asked them, all of the reports that your system generates so that you could identify potential abuse of, ben of, uh, of welfare or of food stamp benefits? And we found that the agency wasn't doing that. So I think that's of much greater value to the agency, to the taxpayers, and also to the people who receive the benefits from those programs so that they can retain public confidence. So we are indeed doing fewer audits, but they are much more meaningful and they are having a greater impact on the operation of government and also on policy making. I mentioned the number of, uh, of audits recommendations that have been turned into laws that benefit the taxpayers just within the past couple of years. Oh, thank you. But I, so I can't, <laughs> more than that, I, I, I can't say. Okay. Fair enough. Um, you have one minute for a closing statement to speak directly to the Massachusetts uh, voters and residents. Well, thank you. I so appreciate this opportunity to come in and talk with you and also to address the, the voters of uh, Massachusetts. When I ran for office, I had a plan to be your agent for accountability in government, to make sure that government money was being spent properly and that services were being delivered effectively. Because though of my background as a former state legislator and also a cabinet secretary, I also had a vision for how that office could work to make government work better by doing more meaningful audits and turning those audits into government reform actions whether by, by the administration or by the legislature. And I'm very proud of the work that we have been able to do. To be able to identify in just a short time over $400 million worth of misspending, inefficiencies, accounting variances, and outright fraud is a considerable feat to have impacted in so many areas of public policy making and law. The park citizens of the Commonwealth is something I'm very proud of. Thank you very much, Ms. Bump, a state auditor candidate, Democratic candidate for re-election. And we want you to make your voice count by voting in the state primary on September 9th, 2014. For Arlington Public News, I'm Brenda Mahoney. Thanks for joining us.